Good morning, church. I'm Dijo Ho uh, a member of the First Free Mission Committee and also Assistant Professor of Human Development and Family Study at SPU. So I look forward to get to know each one of you on campus. Uh, our, reader, our reading this morning is from the book of Luke, chapter 10, 17 to 24. Luke 10, 17 to 24. I'll be reading from the Common English Bible, and you can see that on page 1262. Please turn, if you can, for the reading of the Gospel. The 72 returned joyously, saying, Lord, even the demons submit themselves to us in your name. Jesus replied, I saw Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Look, I have given you authority to crush snake and scorpion underfoot. I have given you authority over all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. Nevertheless, don't rejoice because the spirit sold me to you. Rejoice instead that your names are written in heaven. At that very moment, Jesus overflowed with joy from the Holy Spirit and said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you've hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and shows them to babies. Indeed, Father, this brings you happiness. My Father has handed all things over to me. No one knows who the Son is except the Father, or who the Father is except the Son, and anyone whom the Son wants to reveal him. Turning to the disciple, he said privately, Happy are the eyes that see what you see. I assure you that many prophets and kings wanting to see what you see and hear what you hear, but they didn't. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. In case you're wondering, we totally planned for the worship service to be long today. So I'm sure the hour-long message I'm about to give you is going to fit right into your... It, 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 it's not an hour. I'm really excited for the return of our team. I'm excited for the work that God has been doing. I'm excited for a church that mobilizes and sends people around the world. I'm thankful for a church that ordains women into the fullness of the ministry of the church. Can I get an amen? I'm so excited to be a part of this movement that we're all knit together in. So when a team like this comes back, we sometimes wonder, well, what do we do? I mean, it's right to affirm the way we see God working in people's lives, but how do we respond? And that's one of the reasons I thought about this text from Luke 10 today. Because Jesus sends 70 people out on a mission trip, just like we sent seven. He sent 70 out on a mission trip, and they came back and reported to Jesus all the things that had happened. And Jesus responds to them in a very particular way. And there are four very quick ways I want to talk about this morning about how we celebrate God's grace. And so if we take a look at this text, it'll tell us in Luke 10, 16 this. The one who listens to you listens to me. This is Jesus talking to the 70. The one who listens to you listens to me. And that's the first thing I think we can celebrate is that we celebrate being God's representatives in the world. And we celebrate that from a point of humility and privilege, not from a place of power and authority. That God has called people like us, yes, just like us, to be representatives in the world. That's kind of a responsibility that you wake up every morning with feeling, how shall we say, burdened by? 
being God's representative in the world, that as you go forth and, and live out your life every day, that you have a responsibility not only to go on a trip to Columbia maybe, but any other way in which people look at you, how you conduct yourselves around your peers, around your friends, around other individuals, around strangers. We serve as God's representatives in the world. Jesus says very clearly, the one who listens to you listens to me. And so we always have to take that responsibility carefully as we live out each and every day of our life, that we're God's representatives in the world. Jesus goes on in verses 18 to 20, and here's what he says. I watched Satan fall from heaven like lightning, and behold, I have given you authority to walk on snakes and scorpions and authority over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will injure you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Later on, we're going to have snakes and scorpions in the gym. Oh. No, we're not doing that. I thought you would laugh more at that. I really did. I said to myself, that's going to be pretty funny. And there are no snakes or scorpions. We're not that kind of church. All right? But what I want you to hear what Jesus is telling his disciples, something very important. That there's a way in which when people go on like a mission trip or engage in ministry or find some other way to share the good news of Jesus, we're engaged in a cosmic and a spiritual enterprise. This isn't just about convincing other people to think, act, or believe the way we do. That would be sad. But what is compelling is to recognize that every time we're engaged in the act of transformation, every time another person gives their heart to Jesus, every time there's something that touches an individual's life by the power of the Holy Spirit, just like Lydia shared, that all of a sudden in that sermon she could hear it and comprehend all of it. We give thanks for that, don't we? This is a cosmic thing. This is a cosmic and spiritual affair. And we have to remember that our lives are not this ordinary thing we see of just flesh and blood moving. That's important, but we recognize there's a spiritual reality going on. Jesus says, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. There's something big happening when we take these steps. And so it can be very exciting to rejoice in all that. Oh, that's awesome that thing happened. Or that's awesome that this event occurred. Or that's awesome that even our team came home safely. Jesus says this, Nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. That's the second way in which we celebrate. We celebrate being God's children more than anything that happened. It's important for us to remember the foundational relationship of our life. And that relationship is our relationship with Jesus Christ. And that is the preeminent, most important foundational relationship we all have is with him and through him and by him. We celebrate that we're God's children because all the cool stuff that happened wasn't our doing, it was whose doing? God's doing. It was God's doing. Jesus goes on in verse 21, and it says, He rejoiced greatly in the Spirit. And he said, I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you've hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for doing so was well-pleasing in your sight. Now, I'm not going to say for a minute that Lydia and Serena are infants. You are not. You are very, very wise women. And you're teaching all of us all the time how to be followers of Jesus we need to be. But notice how Jesus talks about this when the 70 come back, that God's revealed these great things, these great movements, not to the learned and experts. Sorry, that's not a qualification. The qualification is simple willingness to take the one step they think one movement, and as soon as we do, God meets us in that very moment. There were lots of wise and intelligent people in the time of Jesus, to whom everyone would have expected a message of God would have come. But instead, God delivers it to these 70 unlikely people that go out on this little mission trip, just like we sent seven people to Columbia. We need to remember the third thing. We celebrate the gift of God's 
revelation. And God loves unlikely candidates. God loves people who don't think they can do it, or they go with fear, or they go with anxiety, or they go with a lack of confidence. These are the people God loves to use. And then in verses 23 and 24, Jesus says this, turning to the disciples, he said privately, blessed are the eyes that see the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see the things you see, and they didn't see them. And to hear the things that you hear and did not hear them. One of the greatest joys I have in my life, the reason for me why, in many ways, I keep doing the work of serving God's people in God's church is because I have the greatest privilege of anyone that I know. I get to have a front row seat to watching God do great things. That feeds me in the work that I need to do more than anything else. The front row seat. And Jesus tells us what that's like. Turning to the disciples, remember, he's talking to the 70, and then he turns to just his disciples, and he says, blessed are the eyes that see the things you see. It's a beatitude. It's a beatitude. There's a great blessing in having that front row seat. And so we heard the report of just a few people from this trip this morning, didn't we? And we can look at them honestly and say, blessed are you, for you have seen the things that you have seen. But that can be true for all of us. Oftentimes we say, I wish I could see God do something great. I wish God would perform a miracle like helping me hear a whole sermon in a different language that I'm particularly not familiar with, right? I wish things like that would happen. Friends, they only happen when we take one step toward God. They only happen when we make the movement in our life where we say, yes, God, I'm willing to move out. Yes, God, I'm willing to speak. Yes, God, I'm willing to go. Yes, God, I'm willing to do anything. If we approximate any step toward God, God will respond immediately. And God has said something like this, perhaps, I've been waiting an eternity for you. That's all we have to do. Because God has done all the moving toward us. And all we have to do is say, yes, God. Yes. And that helps us understand the fourth way in which we celebrate God's grace. We celebrate the blessing of a front row seat. And God wants us all to see that kind of power, that kind of work, that kind of love. We just have to take one step. So when we gather around this table, that's what we celebrate. This is all of God's movement toward us in Holy Communion. And today, our step is not just coming down an aisle and receiving elements. It's taking that one step, saying, yes, Lord, I want to take one step closer to you today. Whatever it is you have for me, as I start this school year out, I'm going to take one step forward for you, God. I'm going to just do it and trust that something great will happen. So will you join with me in prayer? Lord God, we give you thanks for this meal that you gathered your disciples around the very night you were betrayed. In your ultimate act of giving to us, you helped us to remember not only the power of your death and resurrection, but also to proclaim your goodness and your grace, to take our front row seat at the mighty and powerful work you're doing in the world. On the night in which Jesus gave himself up for us, he took bread, he broke it, and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, and after he had returned thanks to you, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, drink from this, all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out for you and for many in my blood for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, God, we pray that you would pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that we might be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Be with us, God, as we take our step this day, our step toward you, to say, yes, God, I'm willing to let you use me. Use me during this upcoming quarter. Use me in my neighborhood. Use me in my dorm. Use me in my neighborhood. 
Empower us with this meal, we pray in the mighty and powerful name of Jesus, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you.